excited that you're here with us. It's gonna be an incredible day. We're gonna worship Jesus this morning. So let's get those hands going. Here we go. Give you my attention, hold my focus, pushing on.
put your trust in him today today tomorrow god you're always faithful i will trust in you we sing it your stand this world it can be easy to turn our eyes to what we can see in the physical realm we turn our eyes to social media we turn our eyes to the news we turn our eyes to our bank account we turn our eyes to relationships 
but it's when we turn our eyes to Jesus that we find everything that we are looking for. It's in Jesus that we find freedom and healing and salvation and health and hope. And it says this in Psalm 121, I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forever. We serve a God who is with us and who is for us and who cares for us and who cares for the very thing that you're caring about right now. And he is faithful and we can trust him today. Would you give our God praise? He's worthy of it. We fix our eyes on him. We thank you, Jesus. Well, we are so glad that each and every one of you are with us here today at City First Church. And whether you've been coming for a day or a decade, you are in the right place. And maybe it's your first time with us. If that's you, special shout out to all of our guests. We pray from the moment you pulled in the parking lot or clicked online that you know that you are welcomed and we hope you feel right at home here. Well, today is a special day because we are celebrating all of the dads. It is Father's Day. And you know, dads, we honor you, we celebrate you, we appreciate you, we are thankful for you, and we have a special Father's Day video that our creative team put together. So let's go ahead and check this out. To every dad, thank you for who you are, for all that you do. We celebrate you, your greatness, your uniqueness. You being exactly you makes us better. Ready for you. To the man, the myth, the muscle. Ready for you. you can push a stroller with your pinky and all the groceries in one trip. With you, Dad Bod takes on new me. To the girl dad. You put the party in tea party. Dollhouses are your expertise. And there's nothing that you won't do for your girls. To the man of the wild. Fish fear you. Trees tremble in your presence. The mountains echo with the sounds of your burly beating heart. To the grill master. Fighting flames of fury, seasoning with style. Fighting the elements to bring us culinary excellence. To the dads, we call coach. Your passion scares us, but you make us champions. These are your glory days. To the king of the yard, the backyard, your sanctuary. The grass is truly greener at your house. To all the types of dads. Be you. That's all we can ask. Happy Father's Day. Okay, so you guys ready to go learn how to play basketball? Yeah. Come on, let's get up for all the dads in the house. Can we do that? In fact, uh, let's do this right now. If you are in any of our locations or even if you're online right now, raise your hand and wave it around if you are a dad. We want to recognize you right now. Come on, everybody. Let's give it up for the dads. We really do take time today and honor you. Uh, being a father is not easy, and uh, you have to juggle and balance all of the things, right? But you know, this is what I know, is that being a father, and I believe I speak for every dad in the house, being a father is one of the greatest honors I get to do in life, and I know that a lot of dads out there feel the same. So again, to all of the fathers, we say we love you, 
Happy Father's Day. We honor you. Thank you for all that you do and also all that you are. And so one last time, put your hands together for all of the fathers in our, our house. Well, in every uh, service, we take a moment to receive a free will offering, and we're going to do that right now. If you'd like to participate, uh, there are ways to give that are on the screen, as well as if you are in a physical City First Church location, on the way out the door, there are some offering boxes on the way out. If you'd like to give a physical gift, like a check or cash, you can do that. And you know what? What we're doing right now is we're giving to the Lord our tithes and also our offering. And you say, well, what does this go towards? Well, basically everything you see. Um, all of the ministry here done at City First is done because of the generosity and the obedient giving of those who do give to City First Church and the Lord's work through City First Church. Even this last week, we were able to feed 500 families in the state line area. Do you hear that? 500 families to our food distribution. Also, afterwards today, we want to celebrate all the dads. And again, we want to just have a great time as a church. And so we have this thing called Dad Fest. And again, it's absolutely free. And even a portion of what we give today goes so that we can help celebrate dads and families and kids and all of those things. But between all of those things, there's also ministry that happens to the kids, to youth, to young adults, to adults and senior adults that happens 24-7 around here. And so we get the honor of being able to give right now and partner with the Lord in his kingdom work. So if you go ahead and prepare your gifts, we're going to go ahead and pray, and then we'll continue with the service. Heavenly Father, thank you for everyone that is giving today. Thank you for every penny that is given, and we pray that it would turn into the good news of Jesus. The Lord, as we proclaim Jesus and we proclaim what he did and who he is, I pray that many, many, many people's lives would be changed. So as we give today, Lord, I pray, turn it into life change. Turn it into change for all eternity. We love you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Let's go ahead and give, all right? Here at City First Church, we love God, love people, and love life. We want to say a huge Happy Father's Day to all of our favorite dads. Thank you for all that you do. We have a gift for you, so make sure to pick one up on your way out. Now, let's check out what's happening around here at City First. June 21st through the 23rd is Summer Blast. City First Kids, join us from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. each day for a fun-packed journey learning about Jesus. Cost is $25, and that includes a summer blast t-shirt, treats, activities, and more. June 24th is Night of the Stars. You are invited to our annual celebration of our amazing dream teams. There will be food, fun, and we'll end the night with fireworks. Dream teams, we will see you there. June 27th through July 1st is our City First Youth Summer Camp. We're headed to Spencer Lake for the best week of the summer. Register today for the best price possible. For more information or to register for any of these events, simply visit cityfirst.church forward slash events. We want to give a big shout out to all of our first time guests. We'd love to connect with you. Visit the City First app and tap Get Connected. If you're at a physical location, stop by the Next Step booth to grab a gift on your way out. Follow us on social media to stay updated on all things City First. Lastly, due to the broadcasting of this message, we ask that if you have a small child in service, please utilize our family room or mother's room designed for you to enjoy service with your child. And now we continue our series from here to there. What's up? With multiple locations. We exist to be a movement of God's love so that cities are full of hope and its people full of purpose. We want to take a moment and welcome everyone joining us today. First, let's give it up for our City First Anywhere fam, everyone watching online from all over the globe. That's right. And hello to everyone watching on the Pando app and God Behind Bars, especially our guys at Dixon and Hardy Correctional Centers. We love you all. Let's hear it for our Southwest Florida family, City First Cape Coral. <laughs> and finally, hello to everyone sitting in a seat at our very own Spring Creek location. That's right. God is up to something today, and he is just getting started. So let's get ready to lean in and take notes as we hear a message from Pastor Ryan Leak. All right, for real this time. Yeah, welcome. 
Welcome to City First Church on this Father's Day weekend. We just want to take a moment to celebrate all the dads in the building and watching online today. It's also officially another holiday. It is Juneteenth. Now, for those of you that don't know, Juneteenth, um, also known as uh, June 19th, it's an important day in African American history. It is officially, for the first time in history, an actual holiday. It's nationally celebrated as a, a, a commemoration of the ending of slavery in the United States. So even after the Emancipation Proclamation, two years after that, on June 19th, 1865, Union soldiers landed in Galveston, Texas with the news that the war had ended and that all slaves were indeed free. So now Juneteenth uh, has become uh, an official holiday. It's an official day where we really get to celebrate the freedom of all people. And I just think it's always good for you to know where, where things come from. Father's Day uh, was actually celebrated also on June 19th, first time ever, 1910 in the state of Washington. And um, now here's what's interesting. It wasn't until 72, 58 years later after President Woodrow Wilson made Mother's Day official. So that day, uh, so just imagine that there, there was a world where there was just Mother's Day. It was like, happy Mother's Day. And all the dads was like, mm-hmm. Okay, now, then 58 years later, it's like, all right, why don't we give them a day too, all right? So, so today, uh, we hold Father's Day in one hand and Juneteenth in another and honor dads while also honoring African-American history and freedom for all people. Uh, my wife uh, actually recently just wrote a children's book. Uh, in this same vein. It's called Jackson and the Not-So-Colorful Day. This is a book that tells the story of a young boy uh, who's an artist and wakes up one day and the world has lost its color. So him and his grandfather, they go on a journey to discover what it truly means to recognize everyone's beauty, making the world a, a more colorful place. And so he goes into all of these different Latin, Asian, uh, Italian, different neighborhoods, and, and the world just keeps getting a, a little bit more colorful. The book kind of goes from like black and white to full of color. And I just think um, it's a great way to have a conversation with kids about how to celebrate the beautiful cultural diversity around them. So shameless plug here for the wifey. You can scan this QR code to get your copy. You should buy 100 each or whatever you can afford. I get it. Times are tough. Uh, now, we've been in a, a series call from here to there, how to grow the leader in you for the world around you. And I think that this is very, very important because in the times that you and I live in, we all need to be growing as leaders. And I'm not just talking about your vocation. I'm talking about your home, your life. Uh, because at the end of the day, leadership is really, it's really just influence. It's just having an influence on somebody. And there's different types of influence. One that has become popular in our culture today is being a social media influencer. And I have many friends that sit in this category. It's actually become their, their actual profession. Now, whenever I have a conversation about this type of influence, the question I often have is going, okay, so if you want to be a social media influence or, or you are a social media influencer, what are you influencing others to do? Yeah. Like you want them to do what? You want to influence them to wear what you wear or drink what we drink or eat what we eat or style our home, how we style our home. Like what is it that you're hoping they're, that they're going to do? If we're going to be influenced by you, what are we being influenced to actually do? And I get that that's some people's career now, but... That's just one form of influence. I think there is a form of influence that is often neglected, and it's the influence that you and I can have on people offline every single day, and the influence that people have on us. Here's what I, here's what I want you to know today. Big or small, every single person under the sound of my voice has influence on somebody somewhere. It could be a class, a team, a neighborhood, a child, a teammate. Uh, my dad had a tremendous influence on me, uh, but after suffering a stroke when I was in the fifth grade, uh, he was simply uh, physically limited uh, for the remaining 18 years of his life. But I do remember growing up here at Christian Life, here in Rockford, and having the opportunity to be around different dads who owned businesses. Uh, some practiced law, some practiced medicine, uh, some were leaders at their company. And I just remember 
So many of those parents who were incredibly kind and generous to me during those years. Um, there was one time I was sitting at a friend's house. We are watching TV, and a commercial comes on, and it ended with 0% APR financing. And I remember sitting on that couch, and I felt dumb because I didn't know what APR stood for. And I just remember um, that dad pulling me to the side and explaining to me how to buy a car and how interest rates work. And he went on to teach me about stocks and investing and, and how that whole world works. And, um, there was another parent who uh, introduced me to a preacher named Dr. Miles Monroe. And here's what he said. Here's what he said. He said, hey, uh, Ryan, for every sermon you listen to and write me a summary, I'll give you $25. I said, you don't know who you talking to, bro. You about to go broke, okay? Like, you ain't going to have no, like, dude, you don't understand. Like, this is my lane, okay? And so, so I just... It was amazing. He put me in a position and had no idea he was training me for what I'm doing right this very minute. He had no idea. So, so here's, so every now and then I'll still listen to Dr. Miles Monroe and still be encouraged. And I just remember the seed that was sown into me when I was just a little boy. So, so one of the mantras I try to live my life by is honor. And so you, you honor people who've helped you along the way. So if somebody went out of their way to look out for you that helps you along your journey, you should go back and say thank you. And so I actually messaged a couple of these parents on Facebook about a year ago. I just said, hey, I just, I just want you to know you've played a huge part in the man I am today. You had a positive influence on my life. And I just, just wanted to say thank you. Now, I'm not trying to knock this guy. But one parent wrote back to me and said, I don't remember any of that. You're just a kid. I don't know. And I just, and, and again, it, it seemed to go in one ear and out the other for him, which is fine. My takeaway was this, from that very small exchange, Ryan, do not underestimate the influence and impact you can have on somebody's life right now. So here's what you gotta understand. I, like, you, whether you're a pastor or a leader or not, you are influencing somebody right now. Do not take that for granted. You never know who's watching. You never know who's taking notes. There's somebody in your life right now that believes they cannot. That has been the theme of their life. I can't, I can't, I can't. They're on the verge of giving up. They've grown weary of the grind, but because they got you in their corner, things could be different. You just never know. Here's what I know to be true for you and me. Whenever we begin to step into the influence and leadership God has called us to, I promise you this. We're going to experience opposition. You cannot be surprised when you experience opposition. There's going to be challenges. And, and today, we're going to talk about the different types of opposition I believe we can experience when trying to be a godly leader. We've been looking at a leader in Scripture who has many leadership lessons in his life. And I think there's a lot that we can learn from him, and his name is, his name is Nehemiah. Uh, he writes about his journey in an Old Testament book named after him, in case you've missed the last couple of weeks. Uh, here's a little bit of context for Nehemiah. Uh, Nehemiah, uh, he was a layman. In other words, he had a regular job. Okay? He wasn't a pastor. He wasn't like a priest or major prophet like Isaiah, Jeremiah, nothing like that. He, he served the Persian king in a regular day job, and, and, he, and one day is brokenhearted. And he sees that Israel's walls were still in ruins. So when they would return there a couple of times a year, they'd always be reminded of their defeat. So Nehemiah is going, I want to do something about this. So the Persian king actually gives Nehemiah permission to go and rebuild the walls and actually gives him the resources to do it. And he gives him a security detail, which is very important. So Nehemiah leads this group of Jews to Jerusalem in order to rebuild the city walls. And here's where I want to begin today's message, and it's found in Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 8. It says, when, and may I have a letter to Asaph, keeper of the royal park, and so he will give me timber to make beams for the gates of the citadel by the temple and for the city wall and for the residence I will occupy. And because the gracious hand of my God was on me, the king granted my request. So I went to the governors of the trans-Euphrates and gave them the king's letters. The king had also sent army officers and cavalry with me. One scholar writes that Nehemiah's expertise uh, in politics and his expertise in spiritual matters made him the perfect person 
to rebuild the walls. And then uh, what we end up seeing in Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 8, it says, When Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the Ammonite official heard about this, they were very much disturbed that someone had come to promote the welfare of the Israelites. Whenever you're trying to do something good, there's going to be somebody that's going, no, some people just want to see the world burn. What we learn from Nehemiah is that the first kind of opposition you and I are going to experience in leadership and leveraging our influence for good is, number one, relational opposition. There's going to be some people in your life where it's just, they just don't want to see you succeed at all. Opposition can come from people we love. Opposition can come from people we don't like, people who don't like us, people we expected more from, people who are jealous. And all I just want to tell you today is this. Don't be surprised when people don't support what God has called you to do. I saw this on Twitter the other day. It says, whatever God called you to do was not a conference call. Okay? It was just, it was just between you and him. You can't get frustrated that other people don't understand it or don't get it. He called you to do it, not them. So sometimes we want everybody to support our cause and get frustrated with others when they don't. One of the most freeing statements I ever heard from a mentor was, Ryan, your world is not the world. Sometimes what happens in my world and my cause clashes with yours, and it can feel like opposition when indeed we're on the same team. In the case of Nehemiah, he experienced opposition because people saw what Nehemiah was trying to accomplish as a threat. So let's look at chapter 4 to see how this played out and what strategy Nehemiah implored to be successful in his endeavors. It says, when Samballot heard that they were rebuilding the wall, he became angry and was greatly incensed. He ridiculed the Jews. You ever been ridiculed? You ever been talked about? What's our typical response? Out ridicule them. <laughs> oh, I'm going to show you. But here was, here was Nehemiah's response. Hear us, our God, for we are despised. He didn't take the social media. I'm going to show you. He took it to God. Ladies and gentlemen, when, whenever you've got relational opposition, sometimes you think, uh, it's here. But before you fix here, you should go there. <laughs> Nehemiah 4, verse 6, th this is, I, I don't want you to just see, see their actions and how they responded to being ridiculed. Nehemiah 4, verse 6 says, So we rebuilt the wall till all of it reached half its height, for the people worked with all their heart. They kept moving. Now we see this theme again a couple verses later. It says, They all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and stir up trouble against it. But we pray. They ain't stirring up trouble, but what, but what are we doing? We pray and posted a guard day and night to meet this threat. You ever had somebody come to your job just ready to stir up trouble? It's like, oh, it's you today, huh? That's, this is what we're going to do on a Monday? Okay, I see, I see what's going on here. Like you, like, you ever had someone in your house come over to you ready to stir up trouble? You're like, why? Why right now, okay? You ever had somebody plotting against you? I want you to see how Nehemiah responded. He prayed, he prayed, we fight. He prayed, we post. But he didn't just pray. He prayed. And the people kept working with all their heart. Sometimes we get relational opposition and we give up. We, we, we stop giving our all because we're going, oh, man, this, this is. He prayed and the people posted guard day and night to meet the threat. Here's what I want you to think about this weekend. Pray for God to do his part. And we keep giving our best energy to our part. The opposition is designed to get you to give up. Sometimes we want God to do a, a, a bailout miracle. But I think what we need to do at times is keep being faithful with our part while we pray that God does the same with his. The second kind of opposition you're going to experience when you start leveraging your influence and start stepping into your leadership is number two, mental opposition. Mental opposition. Somebody getting a phone call. You might want to answer that. Listen, mental <laughs> opposition. <laughs> Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 11. Listen, you can put it on silent now. My might get to say, what's up? <laughs> Nehemiah 4, verse 11, it says, Also our enemies said, 
before they know it or see us. We will be right there among them and will kill them and put an end to the work. This is what the enemies have said. Then the Jews who lived near them came and told us, watch this, ten times over. Ten times over, listen, they're going to kill us, 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 they're going to kill us. Like, do you see? They're... It's in their mind. You can see it. And, and wherever you turn, they will attack us. Therefore, this is what Nehemiah does, he said, I stationed some of the people behind the lowest points of the wall at the exposed places, posting them by families with their swords, spears, and bows. After I looked things over, I stood up, really, after I looked things over, I stood up and said to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people, don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fight for your families, your sons and your daughters, your wives, and your homes. One of the biggest battles you're going to have when stepping into your leadership is between your ears. I, I can't tell you how many leaders. Mind games. It's, 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 it's the wavering. It's the wavering back and forth. Nehemiah 6 verse 9, it, it speaks of this too. It says, they were all trying to frighten us, thinking their hands will get too weak for the work and it will not be completed. But once again, Nehemiah said, but I prayed. But I prayed. Now, strengthen my hands. Did you know that uh, on average we think 6,000 thoughts per day? 6,000 thoughts. They say some people think 60,000 thoughts per day. That's what we call our overthinkers. Any overthinkers in the building, you know what I mean? Like you think in your sleep, okay? Like all sleep is is you thinking with your eyes closed in the dark, okay? You just never stop thinking, all right? Oh, but on average, 6,000 thoughts per day. Did you know 80% are negative? That's 4,800 to 48,000 negative thoughts per day. Did you know that 95% are repetitive? Which means you got the same Spotify playlist going on and on and on and on and on again. And a lot of those are negative. So that leaves us with 4,800 negative, mostly repetitive thoughts a day. How in the world are you supposed to walk in your purpose, steward your influence, and be who God has called you to be with that much negative thinking on a daily basis? Now, here's the good news. Um, I think you can change your thinking. I think you can change your thoughts, and, and I can prove it. Um, nobody, promise you, guarantee you, not one person woke up this morning and said, oh, yeah, you know what I'm going to do today? I'm going to be negative. 4,800, 4,800 thoughts negative. Oh, yeah, oh, Father's Day, oh, forget Father's Day. It's negative day. That's what it's going to be. These kids about to get these negative thoughts. I'm making a plan to be negative. Nobody did that. <laughs> but you can accidentally get there. You can accidentally find yourself just in a bad mood all day long, even on a holiday. It's Juneteenth and Father's Day. You're like, no, nah, but I'm mad. But you didn't plan on being there. We didn't plan on thinking negative today. But did you know we can plan on thinking positive? Most people don't know that. If you don't have a positive plan for your thoughts, you will accidentally, accidentally end up with a negative average way of thinking. Every single one of us. If you, if, here's the deal. I think you can change your thoughts by planning them ahead of time. I think you can. So here's... Here's how some people live. Some people just let their day happen to them. And their attitude hinges on how well their circumstances go. And then there's those special people who've already made up their mind as to what their attitude and perspective is going to be before they see outcomes. So some people wake up expecting bad things to happen to good people. And then there's some people wake up expecting to do something good for all people. What kind of person do you want to be today? Dad, what kind of person, what kind of father do you want to be? Make a plan. Make a plan right now. Oh, I'm buying somebody lunch this week. Oh, yep, yep, yep. I've already made it up in my mind. I don't even know who it is. I don't know who I'm going to be, but, you know, I've already decided that this week's the week. We're going to help a single parent today. I'm going to encourage somebody this week. 
Whether you're in a good mood or not, I've already made up my mind. I'm going to make somebody else's day even if mine isn't going well. You got to make a plan for this. I'm not waiting to see how it goes. No, 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 no. I know how it's going to go. In fact, I'm going to be a part of how it goes for somebody else. Nehemiah saw the opposition and he made a plan. His plan said, I'm going to equip my people with weapons. And guess what? You're going to fight together as a family. You're going to do it together in the midst of their fears and doubts. Remember, 10 times over, they're going to kill us. 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 Nehemiah said, I know what you're thinking, but let me tell you who you are and who your family is. You're fighters. You're stronger than you think you are. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where you start becoming a thought leader. Okay? Hey, mom. Hey, dad. (laughs) Be the thought leader in your home. I know your kids are being influenced by a number of platforms, but be their thought leader. Somebody said to me the other day, I cannot imagine where things will be by the time your kids are in college. And I said, yeah, well, on one hand, you're right, but here's my thought. They'll be there for such a time as then, and I'm raising them for such a time as now. So they'll be there now. They'll be there then. Like, hey, here's the deal. They were born for this time. They were born for this time for a reason. God created them and designed them for this exact moment they're in right now. It's not an accident. It's not a coincidence. Listen, your kids are in the state line area for a reason, okay? They're in Florida region for a reason. Your influence in their life makes a difference. So here's what I want to encourage you to do. Raise them to walk in the influence God has given them. Remind them of the authority they have as children of God. Teach them where to find their identity when tempted to find it in the wrong place. Equip them with the knowledge they need for their future. Model habits you want them to have in their future. If you say, man, I really want them to be raised in the things of God, well, then guess what? You might have to start going to church a little bit more than yourself. You can't expect from them what you will refuse to model. Ladies and gentlemen, God's not shocked or shaken in his, at his throne when he sees what's going on in the world right now. He ain't nervous. God's a lot of things. One thing he'll never be is nervous. You ain't never seen God. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, oh. that ain't God. That, that ain't God. That ain't how God talk. Yeah. No, that's not him. God is looking at what's happening in the world, and he's going, yeah, I'm going to start sending leaders through the next generation to rise up. Don't be afraid. For your children and what lies ahead, prepare them for what lies ahead. I've never been more excited to be a father. Let's go. Come on. We were born for such a time as this. Stop mourning how the world used to be and start shining in the world as it is. The last kind of opposition I believe we can experience as leaders is physical opposition. Hands grow tired. So do our feet. Sometimes you just grow weary of what God has called you to do. And you get tired. Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 10, says, Meanwhile, the people in Judah said the strength of the laborers is giving out. And there is so much rubble that we cannot rebuild the wall. And later on, Nehemiah gets an invitation to take a break. Nehemiah 6 1 says, When word came to Samballat, Tobiah, Geshem the Arab, and the rest of the enemies, that I had rebuilt the wall and not a gap was left in it. Though up to that time I had not set the doors and the gates, Samballat and Geshem sent me this message Come, let us meet together in one of the villages on the plain of Ono. What was Ono? Ono was a beautiful valley some distance from the city. Place of relaxation. Vegas. Cancun. Cabo. Come on, let's take a break. Oh no, it's the perfect name for this place, okay? (laughs) At, At Ono, the enemy says, why don't you just give up? Kick up your feet. You deserve a break. You've been, you've been working hard. Come off the front lines. 
My mom sent me this verse about a year ago. It's out of the message version, Psalms 1830. Every God direction is road tested. Everyone who runs towards him makes it. When going in the direction God has called you to, you're going to be road tested. You're going to be tempted to give up. And and if you're being tested right now, I just want to encourage you to do two things. Number one, study for the test. Number two, pass the test. You're being tested. We all are, okay? So if you feel alone in your testing, you're not. Just pass the test. Just pass the test. Me and my wife, we use this phrase all the time. It's like, whew. I just feel like we're being tested right now. Yeah, we, just, we should probably just pass the test. Just pass the test. I love what we see Nehemiah do. That's, that, it, it, it's an Old Testament move. You see it a lot through the Old Testament whenever they're trying to have any type of strategy against the enemy. One of the things that, that you see in the Old Testament is they always knew who their real enemy was. And they always knew where to go to get their strength. I love what Nehemiah 4 verse 19 says. It says, Then I said to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people, The work is extensive and spread out, and we are widely separated from each other along the wall. We're not together. But Then he says, Wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet, join us there. Our God will fight for us. The OGs in the Old Testament, they said, they didn't fall for the temptation of going, well, maybe if I'm just a better fighter. <laughs> no, no, they said, no, we're going to worship, <laughs> okay? We're we going we to sound the trumpet, and our God will fight for us. What Nehemiah knew was that sometimes people need a rally cry. Sometimes they need a fight song. Sometimes they need something inspirational. To help them get through the night. These were people who were working and preparing to fight day and night. But Nehemiah said, when you hear that trumpet sound, I want you to be reminded that our God will fight for us. And so today we're going to do the same thing. We're going to end this double holiday with worship. And we're going to sing a song called Firm Foundation." And the reason I love this song is it's become an anthem in my life as of late. There's times where I feel like the weight of the world is on my shoulders. And then every now and then I just wake up and say, whose idea was it for you to pick up all of this? Why don't you give some of that to God? Because sometimes even as a father, I go, I don't know what I'm doing. (laughs) God's going, why don't you let me teach you? Why don't you give your parenting to me? Oh, man, sometimes I'm looking at my marriage going, God, am I a good husband? He goes, hey, why don't you? Why don't you give that to me? God, I don't know if I'm doing, I'm making all these good, I don't know if these decisions I get. Why don't you, why don't you, that's what I'm here for. (laughs) Christ is my firm foundation is how this song begins. And my hope and prayer for us in these next few moments is that whatever God's been putting on our heart to lead, whatever God's been put in our heart, the influence God has given us as we experience all different kinds of opposition, I pray that we would come back to our rally cry to remember Christ is our firm foundation, the rock on which we stand. So go ahead and stand on your feet, and I'm going to pray for us, and we're going to jump into the song. Father, I thank you so much for the opportunity we've had today to look at your word. I pray, God, that we would not take for granted the influence that you've given each and every one of us, big or small. I pray, God, that we would give our very best to the assignment you have given us. God, as we experience different types of relational opposition, different types of mental opposition, different types of even physical opposition, God, I pray that in the midst of that, you would essentially be our firm foundation. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say it. Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. When everything around me is shaking, I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus, cause he's never let me down. He's faithful. 
today just about the foundations of our lives. And today, if you have yet to make Jesus the leader and forgiver of your life, we wanna give you that opportunity. And it's as simple as just praying this prayer along with me. Let's go ahead. Jesus, I invite you into my life to be the leader and forgiver. Thank you for dying on a cross so that I can live in you and with you. Thank you, Lord, that your cross has forgiven me of my sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, awesome. If you made that decision today to make Jesus the leader and forgiver of your life, we have a awesome resource that's absolutely free and just for you. It's called New Beginnings. And so you can click the link in the chat right now, or you can go ahead and download our app and hit the Get Connected button. And that will also take you to that incredible resource. Do that, do that, do that. If you haven't ever done it before, go and check that out. It's so great. Well, I'd like to invite Pastor Corey All up right. here with me. We've hey. got so much happening around here. There's yes. so many things that Pastor Corey is going to help me with. Absolutely. Yep. And another great next step for you, if you just prayed that prayer with Candice, would be uh, to go on. We've got a thing called Growth Track yes. here. That's a great way to take the next step in your faith journey. And uh, you can ask tons of questions uh, about what's next for mm -hmm. you and how God has wired you yep. and learn more about who he is and City First and what we're all about. Yep. We've got it virtually and in person. Yep. So you can sign up for that either online through our app or our website. Yep. Uh, to sign up for the online class or come here in person. That starts the first yes. Sunday. I love Grow Track. You actually yep. take like personality assessments and like really discover like your gifts that Absolutely. God has given you. It's really yep. incredible. Yep. Another awesome next step yes. is to sign up to get baptized here oh, yeah. at our Spring Creek location. We're having baptisms on Sunday, July 3rd. Okay. Yep. What a way to celebrate independence than by That's getting right. baptized. So That's you can great. click the link in the chat or you can go ahead and hop online and sign up for for that. That's right. Yep. Also, if you didn't need another next step, <laughs> we want you, we truly do want steps. people to grow so many in steps. their faith. So if you've been following along with us uh, in our series from here to there, we've got a reading plan that goes along with this series. And maybe you missed the first week or two, go back yep. and watch the first week of the series and jump in with the reading plan and yep. follow along. Just a great way mm -hmm. uh, to grow in your faith and join the app. Yep. You can get it on the app. You can also watch on Facebook, yep. Instagram, all the places, YouTube, all, all the places. places. And just a reminder places. too, if you're watching on those, make sure that you've liked and subscribed City First Church on Hit those platforms button. too. That's right. So one last thing, if you watch City First Church exclusively online, you are a part of our City First Anywhere yes. family, and we would love to get con uh, get connected with you. We would love to get to know you. So go ahead, click the link in the chat, or do what? What What can they visit? The app. The app. Okay, the download app, the, the app, app if the you app. haven't. Visit the app and click Get Connected, and then click City First Anywhere. Right. And we would love to pray with you. Um, we would love to get to know you and help you to personally take those next steps. Yep, yep. yep. Well, happy Father's yes. Day to all the fathers out there. And uh, we always like to make sure you guys keep coming back yes. every week because yep. food is good uh, for your soul. So yes. scan the QR code, download the app, the app, yep. the app. And uh, we love you, church. We'll see you guys next week. See you next Sunday.